We come into the church in the morning. We come through the front doors and we see a bunch of t-shirts to the left made by Keith Walker. We look over, we see an array of tracks, and we start seeing people that we love, our friends. This is a family reunion. We walk in, we see each other, we give each other hugs. We're so excited. We sit down and we sink. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I will worship his holy name. Then we pray, we break up into small groups of two, three, four people, and we plead with God, Lord, please give the Mormon people open eyes. Please give the youth, give everyone one good conversation. Give us courage, give us boldness, give us gentleness. Prepare our conversations. Keep out the troublemakers and the disruptors. Give us a great night. Please, Lord, bless Manti. Then we post our prayer requests on the wall so that they can be prayed for again later on. Then we go get some donuts. (laughs) And some more coffee. And we catch up again, and we love on each other, and we meet each other, we make new friends, we see old friends, we see the kids walking across the sidewalk and climbing a tree and huddling under the tree and playing with each other. Then we train. Now, the speakers have historically had a problem going over their allotted time. (laughs) But it has been epic. We have heard about the Trinity We have heard about grace and mercy and priesthood and temple and evangelism methods and the impossible gospel and the impossible gospel (laughs) and the impossible gospel. (laughs) Then afterwards, we go out for lunch. I go out typically to the Salt Rock Cafe. And one of the reasons I love to do this historically is to get more coffee and It's because these guys on the right have been off to the side of the, uh, it's working now for me. Sorry, I got my own notes here. It's worth it, it's worth it. (laughs) These guys are sitting on the side of the, uh, the cafe, and I love going here historically because there's a chance I get to see them sit down and play their guitars and sing more with these sweet voices, these sweet Polynesian voices. What is this? Chris and what are their names? Tyrone, Chris, and I. I see you there hanging on a tree. You bled and then you died and then you rose again for me. Now you are sitting on your heavenly throne. Soon you will be coming home. You're beautiful. Then we rest. Some of us do service projects. Some of us paint. Some of us clean garages. Some of us mow lawns. Some of us sit in lawn chairs. And some of us sleep on a sleeping bag. And we rest and we listen to the wind against the trees of Manti. Others are sitting at the picnic tables under the pavilion, training, preparing, memorizing, asking, role playing, working hard. Then, about 5 p.m., we go to the pavilion, and there's a short lady behind a picnic table. <laughs> named Susie Oliver with the biggest smile in the whole world and she says you come here and eat (laughs) and she gives you a plate and she gets food on the plate and she hands it to you and she has a plastic bin of cookies nearby and you take your plate and you sit down and then you sit with other believers and you make more new friends I love John Piper he said once you can't make old friends later in life 
love that. You got to make them now. We celebrate, we rejoice, we prepare, we ask, we meet. Then, you can't see it in the picture here, but we sing more. Now, this is under the influence of uh, Timothy Oliver and John Cower. So you're going to get hymns at this point. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful, We pray that God would open the eyes of our Mormon neighbors. Oh, Lord, how we love these people. Please open their eyes. Please give us conversations. Please embolden us to speak to them. Please give us wisdom and grace. Please, Lord, have mercy. Meanwhile, the crowds start arriving on the street. To get the best spots, they line up, and the lines start just kind of flowing around, linking up. And, uh, and after all the coffee, we might need the restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I think evangelists are like mosquitoes. We get really excited about large groups of people. <laughs> and this was from last week, and I'm telling you, this Friday might be the biggest night we've had ever. I'm thinking 25,000 people, maybe. And about 5 p.m. last Friday, the crowd's just flowed out and I just I got to preach to one group and I moved over and I preached to another group it's like a five point sermon I mean just they're they're attentive they're sitting there they're listening and I'm praying please Lord that they would not resist the message by drowning me out I, I preached to one group and then I preached to another group now the second group was more rude and they started as I'm just quoting the words of Isaiah and Paul and Jesus and David they just start singing Don't sing this with me. (laughs) Praise to the man. Singing of this Joseph Smith who's mingling with gods and planning for them and interceding for them. And it was rattling. It was discouraging. I'm human. That's rude. This is God's word. This is resistance. And so I walked over to where the Christians were about to start singing. And the Christians were gathering to sing. And I was just telling people what just happened. And we're discouraged. And there's a man who comes up to the crowd and says, is there an Aaron here? And he makes his way over to me and he goes, I'm really sorry for the way my fellow Latter-day Saints treated you. That was really rude. So we walk off to the side and we start talking about the gospel. (laughs) And he... He listens to me about the nature of God. And then, as I'm talking to him, Benjamin, his two cousins walk up, and they walk up, and the lady among them says, Hey, I just wanted to tell you, I'm really sorry for the way my fellow Latter-day Saints were so rude to you. And she stood with her, I think, brother, and they listened to more about the gospel. Meanwhile, the Christians are singing, The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Then the Christians take a knee. The men put their naked knees on the gravel. (laughs) And they take off their hats. And the beating sun, the glory of the heat and the light, shines down on the naked, bald heads of men. (laughs) 
and we feel the pain and it's worth it. And we position ourselves, we posture ourselves in a manner of worship. And in the most beautiful gender complementarian way, <laughs> we male and female sing, Let us adore. <laughs> In groups of two or three or more, we pray, Lord, please help us, embolden us to, see, to, to preach your word that your glory would be spread. Lord, you would be more honored if people were gathered to you. You would be more honored, we think, if more Mormons left the lies and joined us in singing to this great God. Please have mercy on these Mormon people. Please, Lord, embolden us. Then we scatter. <laughs> and it's awesome. They bought that one street, but now the Christians are just more strategic. <laughs> and we make our way to the booze and wrapped around. And look. Daniel uh, goes over to his favorite intersection and he's counting how many tracks he can get out that day. And the youth are scared and their knees are rattling and they're going to go out and they're going to start a conversation and they're going to be foolish and they're going to be awkward. And they're going to make mistakes to the glory of God and have some <laughs> awesome conversations. And the crowds start arriving in hordes. I mean, just big groups. And we're like, whoa, this is crazy. And they even have matching t-shirts. <laughs> Youth groups, family reunion groups, ward groups, family groups, student groups, clubs, friendships. They all come. And... We ask questions. Where are you from? What's your religious background? How long have you been LDS? Did you go on a mission? Have you ever talked to a born-again Christian before? Have you ever heard the gospel? May I please share something with you? And we listen. And we hear a lot of the same things over and over. Evangelism to me is like Sunday school class. It's not profundity. It's simplicity. You listen to these things and you're patient. And we listen we have Keith Walker, Becky Walker, sitting often off to the side on the grass, on the curb, listening. Keith's great at this. He'll just sit 30 seconds and let someone <laughs> think. And we open up our Bibles and we suggest and we present and we show and we declare and we assert this is what God's word says. Please consider. Have you, have you seen this Bible verse before? What do you think it says? What do you think it means? Would you read it for me? And we do history and apologetics and evidence and the gold plates. Bill, of course. <laughs> Chip Thompson sharing about the reliability of the Bible. What a great obsession to have. <laughs> and we engage, we engage apologists. We get Robert Vukic, affectionately known as Wolf Bob, <laughs> who shows up and then Bill McKeever walks up and says, you can hear this, now Bob. <laughs> and then we start collecting small groups. And there's a place at about 8.15, 8.30. And it's kind of like seeing the solar eclipse. You just have to come and see it in its totality. Okay? It's better than the solar eclipse. You come about 8.30, 
And you look around at the intersection and the Christians who have been scattered start to gather a little bit more. And the Mormons who have scattered are starting to gather a little bit more. And these beautiful small groups start forming. And the most beautiful thing in the whole world happens. You look around and you see four, five, six, seven, eight, nine simultaneous small group conversations largely directed by youth and young adults sharing the gospel from Texas, from Seattle, Washington, (laughs) from California, from Iowa, from Utah. The unity of the body of Christ. Got the Calvinists and Arminian weirdos working together. (laughs) For the glory of God. For the glory of the Trinitarian triune three person. Always was God who wants these people to accept the gift of grace. And we share and we plead and we, we work. Then it becomes an appropriate time, evidently. At some point, I really about 8.30, 8.45, it starts to, you can feel the electricity in the air. The ambience starts to increase. They start playing the music louder and the people start streaming back. And some of the Christians have collected back and are loitering. People are loitering. So what? A, it's time to preach. Let it echo across the San Pete Valley. Let the people of the true Jesus rally. Let the timid see a glow and feel the heat as the word of the God, the word of the Lord is preached. God is too great to keep Salt Lake placid. Yet God is too kind for speech like acid. Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth, fit both to whisper and to preach. Fire in my bones for the God of glory. Blood on my hands if I don't share the story. Beats in my heart for sheep with no shepherd. Today is the day to preach. And God's word goes forth. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. On repeat, the angels sing day and night with their iPods. On repeat, they don't stop. The saints in heaven and us down below, we don't stop. We just keep singing holy, holy, holy. And I say God is the first God. He's never learned a thing. He's never, he never received a Christmas gift and said, thanks, I've always wanted that. No, Paul says, who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who's been God's Sunday school teacher? Who has ever given God a gift that he might be repaid for? From him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. And the crowds start to gather. Hopefully in years past they have. And Christians pick people off the sides. Some of my favorite memories. I'm preaching to a crowd and the crowd comes. They line up. They gather around, and my son, a few years ago, younger, just comes over to my stool and just plops right down, sits right next to me, like nothing's going on. (laughs) Last week, as I shared intensely with groups of young adults about the gospel, God, gospel, priesthood, temple, I hear, I feel tug, tug, tug. Hey, Dad, can I have some cash? I'm going to go to the booths. (laughs) Dad, can I go to the bathroom? Dad, can I go with Ken and Brenda to the booze? Dad, Dad, uh, you might have to go to the bathroom. Dad, can I go to the car and get some stuff? It's beautiful. <laughs> and really, it is. That's my daughter. Or my son a couple years ago. Dad, I got my re- first refillable root beer. I was, it was within my budget. Um, <laughs> good memory was not being able to go to Manti for a second week because my wife and I got a message about a baby girl in my hometown, Dayton, Ohio, who needed to be adopted. So I posted, I can't make it this year for the second week. And I'm headed to Dayton, Ohio to adopt a baby. She's due to be born during the second week. This ended up being more than the 30th. So I post this, and I'm thinking with Stacy, I think we're going to have to stop in Des Moines, Iowa. Minutes later, providentially, I'm the Calvinist. <laughs> I'm, but the Armenians agree with me. Totally predestined on this, right? This, this detail. <laughs> this detail, totally predestined. Tom texts me and says, 
hey, Aaron, um, please stay at our place. So while Tom Urban is here in Manti preaching the gospel, I get to go with my wife and be hosted by his wife at his house on the way to the baby. Look at the little tushy. The little, he's like, he's like just, this is my Manti baby. This is Hannah Piper. She's the happiest person in the whole world. Another memory. I, talked, I wrote this. 2012 was an amazing year. I, I talked to two young Mormons, Luis and Michael, walking them through the Marana 818 track. At the end, I froze up. And for some reason, I felt like I had nothing else to say. And Chip Thompson called this a miracle. <laughs> I went cold. So I said, uh, let me introduce you to a friend of mine. So I turned around, not even knowing who I was going for. And I saw Brolin. And I introduced the two kids to him, and he simply walked, I simply walked away. This was definitely a God moment. God did not want me to continue to talk to them. He wanted Brolin to. Brolin gently walked them through a short, impossible gospel presentation, and then the Romans wrote a gospel presentation. They literally expressed relief at hearing the gospel presented, and they prayed with Brolin to receive the grace of Jesus. Another good memory, in 2011, August, Alex left his, he finished his two-year mission, LDS mission in Spain, comes back in June of 2012, he's on the street as a Christian, sharing the gospel with Mormons. Um, a little bit of water, so the... Slithering Scott Hinsey was on the street, and he looked over at Alex. Alex asked Scott, are you pointing at me or are you pointing at Aaron? Scott replied, are you with Aaron? Yeah, I am. President Hinsey motioned for me to come closer. Were you LDS? Yes, I was. Then he turned to the two young men that he was with, and he said, see, Aaron just brings a bunch of apostates with him. Alex replied, I'm not here for Aaron. I'm here for Jesus Christ. Even if Aaron had not come, I would still have come. How old are you? I'm 22. Did you serve a mission? Yes. And did you come home early? No, I finished the full two years. I'm glad to hear that. So you went to the temple and you made sacred covenants and you broke them. Well, those covenants, he said, I looked up, Alex writes, thank you, and thought for a second, I think the best way, Alex said, to put it is that my God understands. <laughs> then Scott Hensey said, you leave and then you mock what we do in the temples. Alex replied, what do you mean by mock? You make fun of the sacred things we do in there. And Alex replied, I am the temple of God. The Spirit of God lives in me just as much as it did in the temple. I am the temple of God. Other memory I love here. So when we preach, sometimes adults will come up and try to interrupt the preaching. You just let them do their thing, but I don't like to let them stop and interrupt the preaching. But when a kid comes up and asks questions, you stop. And some of the most beautiful memories I have are these young, pageant-working boys sometimes. They come and they ask questions. And we have the greatest conversations. Last week, Penelope. Yesterday, a young man named Carter. And we stop. The pageant starts. The prayer is given. We stop. We are respectful. We are not praying to the same God. We are not praying with these people. But maybe we pray to ourselves. Lord have mercy. And then, perhaps, the greatest act of unity between the Mormons and the Christians happens. Well, <laughs> apparently the slide didn't make it in. They put an American flag in front of the temple. And we stop, and we put our hands on our hearts, and we look up at the flag, 
which is awkward for us because it's right in front of the temple, but we sing or we reverence the Star Spangled Banner. Thank God for a sweet minute or two of common grace unity. Praise God. Amen. Then we leave. <laughs> then we head to Miller's. Affectionately known by me as the Christian mosh pit. We crowd, we swarm, we elbow in, shoulder to shoulder, and we look around and we see the biggest smiles in the whole world. We overflow, Millers. We overflow. And we hear these young ladies come out from the back and say, Chip, your order's ready. <laughs> Keith, Susie, Kim. And we know these names. We know all these people. They're our family. These are our friends. And then we rejoice. And we hear people say, I got to share my faith for the first time. Or I had a terrible conversation. Or I got to share the gospel with three young men. Or they stood with me for 15 minutes and heard the gospel. Or he's still over there sharing the gospel on the grass. <laughs> we see families. We eat our corn dogs. Some of us have not eaten in quite a while. We get a little fatter over the Manti pageant. Amen. For the glory of God. <laughs> then somebody out of the overflow on the curb outside of, Man of, the, of the Miller's restaurant breaks out a guitar and we sing. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. to our tents, to our sleeping bags, to our backyard tents, or our basements, or dorms, or RVs, and we talk more, we celebrate more. Some of us go back to the pavilion, and we sing some more. I love you, Lord, and I Then we go to bed and we do it again. Yeah.